What's up, Mahusay? I am Sir Jude Imperial of Quantum Chronicles. In this video, we are going to learn different examples of scientific modeling and the ways to use them in presenting various information. Are you geared up for today's lesson? If you find this video helpful, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and hit the notification button to keep you updated. Alright, let's dive in! When we are talking about models, the first thing that comes to our minds are those crown queens from different pageants or those wearing fashionable clothes on a runway. However, models in science are any depiction of a concept, an item, a procedure, or a system that is used to characterize and explain events that are not immediately observable. In research, as well as in explaining their findings, models play a crucial role in what scientists do. Models serve as a cognitively visual means of connecting theory to experiment and serve as a research guide because they are condensed depiction of a hypothetical world that allow hypotheses to be formed and verified through experimentation. So what do we mean by theory? Theory provides a coherent explanation that holds true for a large number of facts and observation about the natural world. It has to be internally consistent, based upon evidence, tested against a wide range of phenomena, and demonstrate problem solving. Models may be used for several purposes, such as presenting as a hypothesis or offering an explanation for complicated facts. Scientists may put out many models to describe or forecast potential outcomes in certain situations. Scientists frequently disagree about whether their model is right, and as a result, the model is either rejected or revised. As a result, models play a crucial role in the process of constructing scientific knowledge and highlight the uncertain nature of scientific understanding. Scientific models are simplified representation of complex real-world phenomena. They can take various forms, such as physical, mathematical, conceptual, and computational. When we are saying physical models, these are the tangible models like globes, DNA structures, or anatomical models. A physical model can be smaller, larger, or the same size as the actual object it represents. A model that is larger or smaller than the actual object is called a scale model. Next on the list is mathematical models. These are the equations or simulations that represent phenomena numerically. These include graphs such as a pie graph, bar graph, line graph, coordinate plane, and Venn diagram. Mathematical models are the mathematical counterpart of scientific exploration. These models leverage mathematical computations to make predictions and quantify natural phenomena. A classic example is Sir Isaac Newton's Law of Gravitation established in 1687. This mathematical model eloquently describes the effects of gravitational force using the language of mathematics, allowing for precise predictions of celestial motions and interactions. Next is pie graph, also known as a circle graph or pie chart. A graphical representation or visual representation of data that is displayed in a circle. The data is typically in percent form. For example, we want to present how many percent of your classmates love studying science or how many of them are using Apple products. We can use pie graph to present this information. Next is bar graph, also known as bar chart or column chart. It displays data points and frequency distribution. A stack bar chart takes the set of data and divides it into different categories. The bars can be plotted vertically or horizontally. Example of this is the birthdays of the students per month. We can see in the bar graph that the month of November has the most number of celebrants. Next in line is the line graph, also known as line chart or line plot. It displays continuous data over a period of time. It shows how the data increases and decreases. In the picture, we can see that CS grade in science is not consistent. She obtained the grade of 91 in first quarter, 92 in second quarter, 90 in third quarter, and 97 in the last quarter. Still under mathematical models are coordinate planes. It is used to represent ordered pairs in the form of X and Y. It has a horizontal axis called the Y-axis and a vertical axis called the X-axis. 
it is used to plot algebraic expressions or equations such as linear equations, quadratic equations, exponential equations, polynomial equations, and etc. Last for mathematical models are the Venn diagrams. A Venn diagram is an illustration that uses overlapping circles to show the logical relation between two or more sets of items. Circles that overlap have a commonality while circles that do not overlap do not share those traits. As we can see on the example using the diagram, apple and orange have similarities and differences. Third type of scientific models is conceptual models. It presents diagrams or flowchart that depict processes or systems. For example, we have here the food chain where the plant is the producer to be eaten by a deer as primary consumer, then the deer will be consumed by a lion, and over some time the lion will die and be consumed by worms which acts as decomposers. In the field of science, conceptual models perform a distinctive functions. They enable scientists to visualize and conceptualize normally undetectable or highly complex systems. The Bohr model of an atom which depicts electrons revolving around the nucleus and provides a simplified picture of atomic structure is a classic example. This model can help you understand the underlying concept of atomic behavior. The fourth type of scientific model is computational models. These are computer simulations that mimic real-world processes. The best website as an example of computational models is FET Colorado Simulations. Opening the website, particularly in building an atom, it shows that when I add a proton and neutron in the nucleus of the atom and an electron in its orbitals, I have created an element named hydrogen. When I add other subatomic particles in the simulation, it will show that I have created a helium atom. Scientists can measure what has happened in the past, so if the model fits the data, it is thought to be a little more trustworthy. If it doesn't fit, it's time to do some more work. Ground truth is information that is known to be real or true, provided by direct observation and measurement as opposed to information provided by inference. Ground truthing assesses the accuracy of remote sensing data by comparing it with physical measurement collected at the ground level. Scientists harness scientific models for a multitude of reasons, each serving a critical purpose in the scientific process. One primary function of models is to serve as a testing ground for ideas and hypotheses. Scientists need to rigorously examine their theories and conduct experiments to validate their assumptions. By working with these models, scientists can simulate real-world scenarios, allowing for controlled and systematic investigation. For example, a scientist interested in uncovering additional applications of carbon dioxide might work on smaller scale models to test various concepts and hypotheses. Models, particularly mathematical and computational ones, enable scientists to predict future events and trends. For instance, scientists can harness complex calculations and modeling techniques to predict the Earth's climate in the years to come, incorporating historical data and current trends into their mathematical frameworks. To summarize, scientific models are essential tools in the scientist's toolkit since they enable organized ways to comprehend, describe, and forecast the internal functioning of the world we live in. They serve as a link between the known and the unknown, simplifying complicated concepts and allowing researchers to explore unknown information regions. Models enable scientists to light the mysteries of the cosmos and make substantial contributions to our understanding of the natural world, whether they are uncovering the secrets of atoms, tracking disaster-prone areas, or forecasting climate change. Did you enjoy today's lesson? See you again next time. I am Sir Jude Imperial saying, Maniwala at magtiwala na ikaw ay mahusay. Thank you and God bless.